Welcome to Change, sponsored by the Senior Barn of Schaumburg, located at 231 Civic Drive, where nutritious meals, friendly peers, and social activities are available all during the week under the able direction and guidance of Marina Lovovich. My name is Rosemary Colbert, and I am the new host for the Change program. I am happily married to Dennis, and we have six wonderful children. Although we both grew up in Chicago, we have been residents of Schomburg for 27 years. Since we're all familiar with the saying, April showers bring May flowers, today our show will focus on gardening. So let's now meet our expert gardeners who will introduce themselves. Denise? Hi, I'm Denise Sunder. I've been a resident of Schomburg for 40 years. I grew up in Chicago, and my dad was a gardener with the Park District in Chicago to care of the roses at Buckingham Fountain. So I always say he had a green thumb and I've got a green pinky. Uh, I mentioned spring flowers. Today we had a little snow, but I brought a spring flower in, a hyacinth. They're always fun to plant in the fall and see them pop up through the snow in the spring. Remarkable. I'm with the Schomburg Garden Club, and um, one thing has led to another. I became a master gardener and just love all kinds of gardening. And George? Uh, I've been out here for 54 years. And, and your name is? Uh, George Klinger. And uh, 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 gardening has always been part of my family's thing well, forever. I mean, you know, it's just, You were married? Uh, oh yeah, I, I married and I got three children. My wife is dead, but... Uh, and did we, you start in Schaumburg then? You were a youngster when you moved to Schaumburg or...? No, we, when we got married. When, when you got, got married? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And before that, uh, I... Well, what should I tell you about the, uh, the, about the cement? About before that, oh, I, I worked for a company that hauled dry cement from Buffington, Indiana to what is now O'Hare Field. And we did that for four years before we even realized there was going to be an airport. And we were told it was going to be uh, uh, like a farmer's market. So you worked uh, on O'Hare Airport before, before it became officially O'Hare. We didn't even know it was, you know, at the time. And Judy? But I often wondered what happened to all the guys that <laughs> were on that project. Right. But, well, welcome uh, to the show. And yeah. Judy? Hi, I'm Judy Smetters, and I have two children. I've been born in Chicago, and uh, I started gardening when I could walk. I just love the love of flowers and seeing things grow. Oh, so you've always been a gardener since you were young. Yes. And that was my next question. You know, when I was growing up, uh, the block we lived on was mostly Italian. We were surrounded by Polish, our Polish friends, but we were mostly Italian. And every Italian family on that block had a garden. I mean, it was phenomenal, but, and my father, of course, had a garden. How about when you were growing up, where you lived, Denise? Oh, definitely. My uh, family home was built in 1895 by my grandmother, and my parents took it over, and there was an extra lot next door, which was rare in Chicago to have a, another lot. Right. So my dad grew fruit trees and uh, peaches that the neighbors would come over begging for peaches and vegetables and everything. So yeah, I had quite an exposure to all kinds of gardening then. I was uh, raised in uh, Jefferson Park, and we used to have a garden, and we used to raise chickens, sell the eggs to the neighbors. Wow. And, uh, uh, every once in a while, we, when they get old, we had a little, uh, we call a chicken sale, you know, uh, <laughs> for soup. And every once in a while, one would get away and after it got its head chopped and run down the alley. Wow. <laughs> Did you eat the chickens yourself? Or? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Unfortunately, I was the smallest one, and we had the outside thing. It was my job to get in there and lower the level, shall we say. And how about you, Judy? How did you get started with gardening? Did you always, were you, was your family involved in gardens? My mom would uh, have a vegetable and flower garden in uh, Keeneville and Roselle, and I'd take care of it. And she would start her flowers with seed. And oh. every time she would clean the house on Friday, she would have fresh flowers throughout the house. So your garden was basically a flower garden? Yes, we had vegetables also. Oh, you did have vegetables? Yes. Okay, yeah, because I remember ours were almost all vegetables except this one house 
that had the, the line of flowers and every time I'd pass it, oh, look at those flowers. Because, you know, it, when I was growing up, it was from the garden to the table. I mean, you ate what you grew. Do you recall Victory Gardens when you were young? I wouldn't say I recall Victory Gardens. I've been exposed to them the last few years, how they're coming back. Yes, they and are. And it's very interesting. You know, I it comes just around, heard goes around. that. And uh, some pictures of what the original Victory Gardens looked like and uh, how large they were and how important they were during the war. And everybody in the, that, well, of course, like I said, we all, all the people that had lots that had, could you, you could grow on, and we had the corner lot on, on Archer and Drake, and there was our Victory Garden. All the old Italians would be out there uh, <laughs> uh, working on this garden. How about you, Judy? Did you have a Victory Garden when you were growing up? Do you remember? I had one when I was growing up uh, in uh, Keeneville and also Roselle. And uh, it was nice because I'd go out and pick everything fresh and uh, right. you can't beat the taste. Yes. You know, the reason we had Victory Gardens was because of World well, War II. Well, they called them Victory Gardens, but yes. they well, were, you know, they were basically family gardens. Yeah, well, things were rationed, so yeah. things were hard to get. So for people who didn't have a garden, well, they six, could go and as long as they worked on their this garden, they could go in and share with them. There were six them. kids in our family. Yes. Wow. So. Yes. We did the whole thing with the phone books and the whole shot, you know, anything for a buck. Oh. <laughs> did you have any interesting experiences while you were gardening? Uh, Laurie was telling us about how rabbits, uh, they'd have to guard against rabbits and, and skunks, and they'd find missing watermelons when she grew up in New York. Well, the worst is tomatoes, because you wait and wait and wait for that tomato to just be perfectly ripe especially the heritage ones, and that one extra day, you, just one more day, and that's when the squirrel gets it. Oh. He doesn't eat the whole tomato. You wouldn't mind that yeah, so just much. A bite. He just takes a bite just out of it. Just enough to wreck the All tomato. Right. How about you, Judy? Do you remember any of that? Did you have any experiences? Well, one year was the year of uh, young life because I found a nest of baby bunnies in my rock garden, oh. and I took them out, and they were like eight of them all oh. cuddled together, wow. and the mother should rip her fur out to keep them warm. And also in my kitchen window, we had a nest of cardinals and a oh. male and a female take turns feeding the babies. Oh, it so was beautiful. You, you my, had wildlife along with your garden. And I have hummingbirds and my daughter spent the night and she was out having coffee on the lower patio and uh, there were rabbits out there and there were squirrels and there were hummingbirds and blue jays and she felt like Snow White. Oh. <laughs> What did you do with the produce? Did you eat it all or did you share it? Because I don't remember. Everybody had a garden, so yeah. we didn't share ours when we were young. They just used a can. We, 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 yeah. we sold the eggs mm -hmm. to the neighbors, but other than that there, right. uh, we, used, we used the eggs for our own family also. Right. Yeah. But, uh, so you were Eggland's Best before it was Eggland's <laughs> Best. Okay, we'll be right back after this commercial. Welcome back to Change. We are talking about gardening. Times have changed and so has gardening. I'd like to ask my panel now, what inspires you each season to get started again? Well, there's a lot of things that inspire me. Um, I'm with the Garden Club and we're always being exposed to really good speakers and trying something new and learning different things. I guess I always do the standard tomatoes and the zucchinis and things that we want to eat mm -hmm. uh, and enjoy picking fresh in the garden. But it's always a challenge to grow something different. Uh, I grew okra last year just because oh. a beautiful plant um, and made a few things out of it, but it's a very pretty plant. Is it easy to grow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, good. Very easy. <laughs> For me, I have plastic thumbs, so nothing is easy. I'm not a gardener. <laughs> I admire people who are, though. Believe me. Okay, George, how about you? Well, it's uh, one of those things that go with the seasons. Um, and it's, it's like the, 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 you wake up in the morning and all of a sudden it's springtime. And you get the urge? You get away from the snow and the sleet and the snot, you know? Uh-huh. Well, <laughs> yeah. I have to ask you, George, now you're involved in the intergenerational garden. Yeah. 
is a collaboration effort between the seniors, the teens, and the Village of Schomburg yeah. Public Works. Uh, you have raised bins to make it easier for seniors to mm. plant and maintain, and an ingrown, in-ground portion mm -hmm. is handled by the teens. All the produce is used by the barn participants, and the surplus is given to the Schomburg Food Pantry. Every day I, I go out when, when things start ripening, and I pick whatever's ripe, and I bring it in the kitchen, they wash it up, and uh, at the end of the day, they, they put it out for the people to take home. Uh, so it's a... And you bring stuff from your own garden to... Yeah. to, to well, I, I'm, I'm by myself now, right. so... Uh, I, I used to take it to the pantry, but now it's more convenient. You bring it right to the barn <laughs> to the for barn. us seniors. Yeah. Yes. How about you, Judy? Do you work on the garden, or do, uh, do you have your own garden, of course? I have a flower garden. I have maybe 50 perennials. Oh, so you don't grow produce anymore. No, you just have I to used flower. to have one. It's just too difficult. Do you grow? Do you help with the generational garden? I uh, well, I help plant the garden. Oh, very good. And I pick things too, also with George when I can. Yes. Okay. Good to have help. But now, how about your family? Does your does your uh, your children? I mean, do they help you do any of this? Are any are your children around they got with their own you? Gardens. Oh, they do have a garden. Yeah. I was just helping my grandsons this weekend. I visited them, unfortunately, they live way over in Michigan, but they had, were planting different things in cells to get the seeds growing in that. Wow. Uh, and my grandson made me this necklace. I promised to show it. It has a red oh, rose on beautiful. it because he knows how much I love roses. So I'm getting them inspired. So they were growing watermelons. They're very ambitious. Watermelons, cantaloupes, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. green beans, and tomatoes in little cells, and then you're going to take them home. So you were a good inspiration for mm -hmm. your children. I mean, it's remarkable that they picked up on that. How about you, Judy? My daughter had a garden, and um, she's real good with uh, vegetables, tomato plants, so out of this world. And my son, Houston, he's into the flowers more. Oh, yeah. See, it's a difference between if you like the flowers or the or the produce. Well, you know, when when I was when I was young, of course, I, I gardening. F I just don't have any green thumb. I've tried everything. I plant plastic. But two of my children, um, especially my older son, he lives in Charlotte, North Carolina. He became a landscaper. Huh. And I, when, he first be, when he first started working as a landscaper, I asked him, I said, Jimmy, uh, how do you like landscaping? He says, Ma, if I had known then what I know now, I would have done this. I would have gone to school for this from high school. And now, of course, he's got this beautiful garden and he plants everything. I mean, he, you know, he just, he's remarkable. And for a kid that didn't even want to mow the lawn for his father, you know? And my, my daughter is, is very good, but it's, re, it's really remarkable how some kids will pick up on it and other kids have no desire. So you're very fortunate that your kids uh, are interested in doing that. How about yours, George? Well, my one is an Algonquin, and uh, he's got his own garden. He's got about three acres of land there. Wow. And, uh, and they plant the whole three acres? No, you know? no. <laughs> no, he's got his swimming pool. And, oh. You know, uh, 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 Algonquin has lots of space there. Yeah, yeah, right now. We'll see how yeah. long that lasts. But, uh, no, he, he enjoys it. Uh, after after work, it's a it's a good take take take, take some mind off of stuff. It's good right. catharsis gets yeah. you right. get you out and yeah, clears get, your brain. Get in, in touch with nature. And your children, Judy, they don't they they work. Do they have a garden or just flowers? No, just flowers right now. But it's therapy for me. If I could, I would live outside. I just love it. I could carry really? away. I could spend five hours out there. Do you, you have your own house or you have a... No, I have a raised ranch. And I've been living out here, uh, it'll be um, 52 years. Oh, you've been here a long time. I'm the only one that hasn't moved on my court. Everybody has gone three, four families I've seen move in and out. And George has been here 54. since? 54. And how about you, Denise? 40 years. Oh, so you're all natives of Schomburg. You, so you, you've I'm seen it grow. Honor. Yes. How is it different now from when you first moved? Were there more gardens when you first moved? There was out? a horse farm on Roselle Road. I remember we came in and you couldn't shop on weekends. <laughs> Stores oh. were closed. Um, 
And, but I do remember where we have this wonderful trickster art gallery right mm -hmm. now. It used to be a farm center and you could go in and buy seeds and things uh, like the farmers would. And my dad would even drive in from Chicago because he loved to be able to get the supplies from there. Um, so yeah, it's changed quite a bit now. Do you do any canning? I don't, no. Or how my about mom, my mom uh, would put up uh, bread and butter pickles. Those are really good. I was just gonna ask you, if you, does anybody do any pickling or anything? No. Yeah, see my mother used to, as, as, as beautiful as my father's garden was, she, my father would still buy uh, bushels of tomatoes and he would, uh, my mother would, and I remember being in there, peeling them, you know, they had to be in the hot, in the hot water and you peel the tomatoes and then. Well, I just, when I lived in the city, we had the, uh, the, 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 the pickled stuff and everything. Yeah. Uh, we had a regular pantry and mm -hmm. the whole shot. And when you got six kids, you got to have a yes. lot of stuff. Yeah, that's one thing I regret. My dad did a lot of pickling and things, but as a kid, I just, you know, let him go do it, you know, yeah. never really said, come here, learn how to do this. And I remember cleaning the jars, mm -hmm. uh, but never really learning the process of it. Mm, well, jars I, up all over. I had a friend, my girlfriend's mother, she used to make her own jardinier and everything. Mm. She'd pick the stuff out of the garden. I mean, they, they had they had a shared garden with the with the house next door and there, and there was this lot, I don't know, three lots. And they used to uh, share the lot and, and plant on it. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Welcome back. We were just talking about gardening. And now what we'd like to know is what is different now than when you first started gardening? Well, Mulching. there's certainly a lot more information Mulching. out there that uh, whether you want to just plant a small container or you want to plant a big garden, um, whether you join a garden club or you go to some of the new garden centers, old and new garden centers, we've lost a few. We lost random acres on Schomburg Road, right. which is a shame. But, um, and the big box stores are there, but you go to the little garden centers, you have more expertise to help you. The master gardeners will be there and a lot more informational base. Uh, speaking of master gardeners, uh, we have a wonderful farmer's market on Fridays in Schomburg starting June 1st, and they're there every other week right. giving out information mm -hmm. on that. And you can learn things there, be inspired by the produce from the farmers, because we really, Martha Dooley does a great job really bringing true farmers in. Um, yeah, there. So you learn a lot or you get inspired and say, oh, I'd like and to grow that. And it's organic. And it's organic, yes, yeah. yes. How about you, George? Any difference since you first started? You still use the same methods? Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I take the, the grass and for the mulch and everything. Do you make your own compost or uh, do you? Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I, you I, do? I usually got a bit. The only thing is I quit it because it stinks. Oh, but you used to make your <laughs> yeah, own I used compost. To, but, uh, Wonderful. You, know, like you got to think of the neighbors. My father did too. He used to. I mean, they'd have the maggots all over it in this big barrel. And keep and turning it, so you have to keep it. It was remarkable it. how I, you know, it was the forerunner. Well, he was an old peasant from Italy, so knew, he knew what he was doing. And I just look in the maggots and shut it real quick. Yeah. How about you, Judy? I'm well, sorry. Well, it's more natural. Uh, more natural things that they used years ago. Like uh, if you have a problem with ants, they hate coffee grinds. Oh, and also, I didn't know that. And mosquitoes, you want to keep mosquitoes away, you should have a lot of plots of basil on your patio. And wow. pansies, they don't like those. See, we knew we had this show for a reason. That is really good it's information. Like it's like roses. They like eggshells. Yes, eggshells. and also coffee eggshells. grinds. They yeah, love. Coffee I grinds, heard yeah. that about yes. coffee grinds, yeah, yeah. too. Co Not coffee yeah, potatoes. Well, they, love they love potatoes. I, I, I got the, you know, the patio. I got the stem roses. Stem and a potato. And I just got the whole thing covered with coffee. My coffee grounds coffee go in there. Coffee grounds? How about your eggshells? Eggshells, in, eggshells in, go in there. That's I collect slums. them all. <laughs> banana well, skins too. Hmm? Yes. Chop up banana skins. Oh, banana and skin, yeah. potassium. Yeah. Gives you a little wow. chemical to they them. They smell. Well, very good. You cut, you banana skins. Okay. You guys Not are the banana, weak. just the skins. And then yeah. beer. You make a little tub like some margarine you fill it with beer and the slugs go in oh, there yeah. and they drown. 
It's a way. It's That's sort a of a good way to, to waste go. beer. What a, but way, happy. What a, what a waste of beer. <laughs> Does, did anybody try that with where they put the newspaper with the worms? Have you heard about that method? I've seen that on television. Yeah. Well, Channel Eleven, they have this little girl that comes from. Uh, the Botanic Garden or whatever it is and and she shows how they have the newspapers and they and the worms and the next thing you know It's all Compost for your garden. It's, it's like a natural. Well, you can use yes. newspapers and then you, to for, start it and then yeah. you start throwing your stuff in there or something I never went that route though. Yeah, it's a worm composting bin and you can set it up real simply with just a plastic container like you say Rosemary uh, some um, Newspaper, I, I found... but it, the worms excuse me George is just your red worms, you can't put earthworms in there. Oh! I, I, I found out though, that if, you, if you use the, your grass and put a mulch and everything else, the worms will be there. No? Yeah. I mean, it, it's a natural thing. Did any of you, you go to school ground. for this to be gardeners? I mean, no. did, did you, you just my, learned this all parents. on your own? <laughs> Yes, and by reading it or whatever, you just uh, reading picked it up. A lot of books. Wow. And I still have my, my dad's hands. gardening books. I still have his schematics of um, Buckingham Fountain, where he laid out all the roses, George, uh -huh. all the all the heritage roses, wow. and he would go out there and plant Buckingham? them with his crew wow. and everything. Wow. So I learned a lot that way. But I took a uh, course at the University of Illinois Master Gardening Program too. Oh. So um, you get more in depth kind yeah. of. Yeah. So you guys are really professional. You could be on national television, my goodness. This is remarkable. I mean, for a girl that, you know, I'm lucky I can read these, this paper, let alone <laughs> plant anything. But you mentioned Botanic Gardens. That's well, a wonderful you resource. Got six kids. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The Botanic Gardens you mentioned, that, that's a wonderful resource. It's a good hour ride for us to get over that's there beautiful. from Schomburg, but it's well worth it. And we went with the barn. We, that was one of our yeah. outings to go to the Botanic Gardens. And Morton Arbor Rams, a straight shot down 53. That's a it's real a beautiful easy to get yes. to and everything. See, there and they the have a lot of plant classes and things yeah. to learn. Well, they're going to have a, a, a plant sale from uh, from Spring Valley too. Yeah, if it's I may, it's in conjunction up. with Spring Valley and the Schomburg yes. Community Garden Club. It's uh, May twentieth, and it's our thirtieth uh, year of doing it with them. Uh, and we only sell native plants, so that's really good for the uh, the gardens that have native plants there. And uh, Spring Valley supports it. Now, are any of you for, familiar with hydroponics? What do you think of that? Well, the schools are getting really big on that because they have limited space to grow things and teach mm -hmm. the students. So by bringing it indoors, it's easier for the kids uh, and the teachers to control it. In fact, we just got in touch with Conant High School, and they just introduced a big hydroponics program with their um, their students over there. Thanks. And our garden um, people are bringing in seeds for them and, and trying to support them. They came to a couple of our meetings, and they're going to help us with the vegetable garden we grow over 2,000 pounds of vegetables for the food pantry oh in Schomburg. Wow. So uh, it's a nice relationship between the teens and our garden club and that. So um, it's, a, it's, a, it's not as easy as it seems to grow on hydroponics. Um, it has its challenges just like outside. But the one advantage is you don't need any pesticides. Mm -hmm. No, you I mean, shouldn't. I mean, in everything, you don't have to worry about the weather because everything or is the indoors. <laughs> yes, or the deer. Yes, yeah, you don't have to worry it's about sharing my, my son's got problems with. In Algonquin, there's a deer. Yeah. The deer, see, yeah. and here we were worried about rabbits and skunks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, he skunks got the deer so problem. Terrible. Yeah. Now they've got greenhouses, too, that I just heard about, where they put the water, it's laid on water and the bricks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, now that's something new. I mean, this is wonderful because if they sell up all the farmland, that at way, least we'll be around. able to feed ourselves. It's year yeah. round that way. And it's nice that the restaurants can can come and use all that fresh produce. And you, of course, you guys do that. You bring everything into you. Can you tell the difference between store bought and stuff you plant? Sometimes mm -hmm. uh, store bought is usually perfect looking, right? It, well, it is an app, but, <laughs> but I mean, the, some, taste. The, the, the flavor. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, is usually you can tell by the flavor. Mm -hmm. uh, but. I'm, I'm at the where I can't eat the green veggies anymore. Oh. And it, it hurts because I can't eat any more broccoli, which is terrible. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess it's time to close our show. I want to thank Denise and George and Judy 
And I hope everybody enjoyed our little gardening segment here and learned something. I know I surely did. And I hope you have a wonderful spring and a, and a wonderful summer.